right, your basic things right here on the Boomer's Brain Trust program. Another hour is just ahead. Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith, we appreciate all y'all on TV and radio across this great land of ours. A reminder, by the way, you can watch us live online at Boomer's braintrust.com and as we've been telling you once again on tv in cities around the country that's on biz tv it is the home for your business whether you're an entrepreneur you're a small business owner or maybe you're just managing your family's assets which by the way is actually a very important job as we've been telling you biz tv can help growing all the time now in new york philadelphia and orlando biz tv it's your biz uh well biz of another kind showbiz did you hear are you aware the Oscars, the copyrighted property and registered trademark and service market of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, are this Sunday. <laughs> Did you hear that, Diana? I know this. You John. knew this a long time ago. I know this I know. because I love watching I know the you Academy do. Awards. Yeah. yeah, you unless it's the unless it's Rob Lowe and Snow White singing. <laughs> but then I watch because she's a friend. Well, okay, so there you go. Yeah. It's they hate to see a friend in a train wreck. But the first <laughs> <laughs> They're coming up this Sunday. Now, the first award, which is, I think, the one for Best Gaffer in a Foreign Documentary or Japanese Live Action Short featuring Kay Ballard and Eddie Albert, that's going to get underway in the late afternoon on Sunday with the festivities <laughs> scheduled to continue well into the wee hours of next Wednesday. But <laughs> any way you look at it, Hollywood and movies will be dominating the discussion boards for the next couple of days. And that's why we're talking about it, really. I don't know about you, but I'm having trouble finding, this is just me, any, I, I'm having trouble finding any movies to get excited about anymore. Now, am I getting too old for movies? Is that possible? Are we boomers being uh, shut out by the film industry in favor of the younger audiences uh, of what they want to see? Am I just too narrow-minded? John DeLeo is our Boomers Brain Trust film expert. We just appointed him that. He's also author of several books about uh, Hollywood and the classic movies. He's got a lot of knowledge on this. And we've corralled him here for just a few minutes to talk about all this. Hey, John, uh, uh, thanks for sitting through that, and welcome to the program. Oh, thanks so much. It's nice to be here. Uh, so let's keep it current for just a moment. Uh, of the nine or ten or however many nominees there are for Best Picture, I mean, this is the common question. Does anyone stand out to you on Sunday as a particular favorite to win? Well, they're talking about it at this point with just, you know, two days to go as a neck-and-neck -neck race between Gravity and 12 Years a Slave, which is interesting because they couldn't be more different from each other. So, you know, it's not like choosing two movies that are – between two movies that are sort of alike and which one you liked a little bit better. Mm -hmm. They're so wildly different. Uh, and even the third place sort of contestant, which would be American Hustle, is wildly different from the first two I mentioned. So it's really about the mood you're in when you're voting or <laughs> which kind of movie you want to see represent uh, 2013 as time goes on. It's, it's such a hard thing to predict. And the, the pre-Oscar awards have been distributed to all three of these movies in, in different places. Although the biggest indicator of what's going to win is always the Directors Guild yes. Award, mm -hmm. and Gravity got that one, mm -hmm. so that gives it something of an edge. I saw it was like 78% or something yeah. of, the, uh, of the winners were, were the ones that got that award. Yeah, yeah right. that's, that's always been the best of all the many, many indicators, but uh, yeah, that's fairly reliable. So, John, are there any movies that stand out from this last year that you might classify as, you know, the instant classic, or was it kind of just another one of those years of where we see a lot of things cranked out and audiences expecting to see exactly those movies. I mean, is anything standing out as just being really a classic for you? Well, you know, it's the, the funny thing about the classics uh, is that it does take some time. You know, sometimes it'll take 20 to 25 years before we'll find out, hey, you know what's the movie everyone's talking about from 25 years ago? And often it's not even a movie that was nominated for an yeah. Oscar. Especially if you look back at something like the 1930s and you talk about the way we respect the Frankenstein movies or the Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers musicals, which more at the time were considered, you know, popular entertainment. And now, in many ways, they're more highly regarded than some of the more serious biographical movies, which now often look dated and kind of, you know, clunky. Mm -hmm. So it's so hard to say. Uh, but to answer your question, you know, certainly in terms of uh, technology, gravity will be an instant classic in terms of taking the medium to new places, you know, in terms of its use of the 3D and its it's the way it convinced us we were in outer space for 90 minutes. Uh, you know, sort of the way 2001 Space Odyssey mm -hmm. did that in 1968. So this would be cause sort of the next step in that line of how, you know, the technological advancements of film, uh, maybe right. not as much dramatically, but certainly in the sort of the look of the film. You, 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 mentioned, uh, you mentioned old movies, and I, I, the one I just saw, just uh, I've seen it many times over the weekend. I think it was It Happened One Night. 
and and uh, nobody thought anything of that movie. In fact, yeah. I, I don't even it's think funny you mentioned that one because uh, not only was it a big Oscar winner, uh, ultimately it won in the top five category. Yeah, yeah. But but that movie turns eighty this very week. <laughs> oh man! And, oh, and it's, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's a good example of something Oscar did right. It's a great movie. If you watch it today, it's still a great movie. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. And it was one of the most influential movies ever made because every single romantic comedy that has been made exactly. since then, and there have been about you know ten thousand, <laughs> uh, they all owe something to it. Happened one night, and, and the and leg that, scene, I think. Oh yeah, just, you know, sure. That, that was Claudette Claudette groundbreaking. After another, it oh man. Quit. Now I, I got to ask you because I got a minute or so. Uh, does it look to you that movies are tending to shift away a lot from storylines and dialogue into this computer-generated animation? Now I mentioned before, to me, it's nothing more than a glorified video game. But it, I mean, do, do you see that, or is it le is it all CGI now, or am it, I, it's it just... does? It's certainly going that way, and yeah. it's sort of when you go to the movies and you see something spectacular, you think, well, you don't even wonder how they did it because you know they can do everything, and it's something with a computer and whatever. It's it's not like years ago when you'd see the parting of the Red Sea and think, how did they do that? You know, how did yeah. they make these things happen? And now it's easy to be sort of blasé about it because we just assume, you know, the other thing is when they'd have 5,000 people in a crowd, you had to get 5,000 people, and now we assume <laughs> nobody's really there. So. That, that's right. It does take away the excitement. <laughs> I, 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 was it Gone with the Wind? And, right, but, but right. I think they had dummies. The I devastated yeah. Atlanta yeah. scene. <laughs> yeah. Now, John, uh, what's interesting, we were, as boomers, we were talking about this earlier, the fact that we actually have some older seasoned actors up for awards. And not only that, but every single nominated director this year is 50 or over, as are all the screenwriting nominees. So uh, are we starting to see a little bit of shift uh, away from the young and hip and all that into something that maybe is a little more sophisticated and cultured? Well, that's, I'm 53, so I'm glad to hear that. I don't think I had done the math. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. Um, you know, you're right, though. Uh, two of the Best Picture nominees revolve around people in their 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, Philomena with Judi Dench, and she's up for Best Actress. And Nebraska with Bruce Dern, he's up for Best Actor. So that's two, you know, movies aimed at an older audience. And not only did they get the audiences to come, but they got this Oscar recognition. So I think there's always that sort of duality of, yes, they're always going to be making movies right. like The Avengers and then the, the, for the teenagers and the things like Frozen for the kids. But you'll always have people making these smaller stories. Which I like, by the way. This. I, I appreciate that. John, I'm sorry we're out of time. we got a hard break. John DeLeo, I appreciate that. We're going to have you back on maybe post-Oscar and get your, uh, get your reaction to that, if that's all right. I appreciate it. John DeLeo, really, really good stuff. He was fun. That he is was fun. neat. That is all right, neat. good stuff. And he's 53. He's yeah, right here with he's us. he's one of us. He's one of us. All right. Well, we got more of us for another hour at the Boomer's Brain Trust just ahead.